Hey, oh, right, this is the last video of the month, so I have a few things to get through. I finally got the footage together for that Barber Bag review, which will be coming up in a couple of minutes. And today is your final chance to get your competition entry in for the Motone Customs Photo Competition. But first of all, if you enjoy this video, please leave a like. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to this channel. It's absolutely free of charge, and unlike motorcycles, it will make you more attractive to the opposite sex. The Motor and Customs Photograph Competition ends at midnight British summertime tonight. So if you haven't got your entry in for the June competition, you better do so now. The rules are, any make or model of motorcycle can be entered into the competition, but it must have Motone Custom parts, at least one Motone Custom part, fitted to the bike and it must be clearly visible in the photograph. You can submit up to three photographs. Photographing a motorcycle in portrait mode on your camera or your camera phone is a crime against humanity so all photographs must be in landscape mode please. That's short and wide like the video that you're watching now. Please be aware that the photographs that you submit to this competition may be used for promotional purposes by Motone Customs or displayed by myself in the announcement video. By submitting your photos, you are giving us permission to do that, so if you're not happy with that, it's probably better if you don't enter. Motone are being very generous with the prizes this year, the top prize being a £250 e-voucher to spend against any Motone Customs products. There's also a very generous prize pool for second and third place winners. And Sam got in touch with me last night to tell me that everyone who enters the competition is a winner and will receive a mystery prize to the value of, I think it's about £15. So really, everyone who enters this competition is a winner. I think initially the mystery prize was just going to be given away to those whose photos are shown in the announcement video, but Sam, being the pleasant and generous chap that he is, has decided that everybody's going to get something. Your photographs should be sent to Sam at Motone Customs at the email address in the video description. I'll repeat that because people are having problems. You should send them to the email address in the video description that's the texty bit underneath the video that you're watching now now i believe there is going to be another photo competition for july so if you don't have any motone customs parts fitted on your bike you can take advantage of this channel's exclusive 12 percent discount code for motone customs which is currently cactus and again i will leave that in the video description down below Actually, I think it's about time that that uh, code was changed now. We seem to have been using that one for quite some time. Sam is the adjudicator for this competition. He will peruse your photographs over the weekend, and the winner will be announced in a video sometime next week. Right, let's get down to business. The Barber Terrace Waxed Cotton and Leather Bag. We all need to carry things with us on our bikes. If you commute to work, you probably want to take your pack up and other worky related things. You need somewhere for your phone and your wallet. And if you're going to spend any time away from your bike, obviously it's better to actually have it on you. Now, backpacks are great. You can get loads of stuff in them, but they can get a bit uncomfortable over long distances. Back in my commuting days many moons ago, I used to use an over-the-shoulder or cross-body sports bag. And it's always puzzled me why no one has a problem with that. But as soon as you start to use a classic leather or canvas bag, you know, something a little bit more grown up, you instantly get accused of being a hipster or a poser, you know, with your man bag. Now, I know sports bags are convenient and they're easy to get hold of, but personally, I don't want to be riding around looking like I'm on my way to the gym, because I'm not. Now, if you've followed this channel for any length of time, you know that I'm sort of into history, whether it be 
the history of motorcycles or local history, architectural history. And as you may have guessed, I also quite like to visit some of the old East Coast churches. Last week's attempt at filming this video was a bit of a disaster, so this time I didn't really have any expectations, I just went out for the day. I took everything with me that I normally take for filming just in case, and as it happened, it turned out to be the perfect opportunity. I'd like to say a big thank you to the custodian and key holder of St Peter's Church at Humbleton for opening the doors especially for me for this video. A gorgeous little parish church nestled in the picturesque village of Humbleton on the east coast of Yorkshire is well worth a visit. The original building dates back to the 1340s although obviously this has now been interwoven with later additions and restorations but it does have what is thought to be one of the original medieval front doors made of good old-fashioned English oak which is considerably older than the United States of America the church is open to the public free of charge every Sunday afternoon if you do happen to get there and it's not open the keyholder lives in the nearby old schoolhouse and I'm sure if you're polite and ask him nicely he may be willing to open it up for you. These ancient buildings are in danger and it would be, in my opinion, rude to visit them and not to leave some pocket change in the collection box. They're a part of our heritage and it would be a shame to start losing them. You see, for me, this is what motorcycling is all about. You don't have to go on a 200 mile journey. A bike gives you the freedom to just get out and about. Visiting sleepy little villages like Humbleton. There are literally thousands of them across the UK. All of them quite charming in their own way and most of them having ancient buildings like St Peter's which I have to say is one of the better preserved that I've been to. It's good for your mental health to get out and about to places like this, especially after this last year or 18 months. So, this little Taras bag from Barber. I think Barber's probably one of the oldest brands in motorcycling, going back to the 1930s, and certainly going back until even the late 1980s, a motorcycle dealership wasn't a proper motorcycle dealership if it didn't stock Barber clothing. As you know, I am a bit of a fan of waxed cotton and waxed leather, and for me this bag just completely hits the spot. It sort of fits into the Goldilocks zone, not too big and not too small. Plenty of room for my main camera, which is quite large, a pair of small binoculars, some heavy duty waterproofs, spare batteries, phone, wallet, with plenty of room to spare. Like all barber gear, this bag oozes craftsmanship and quality. You pay a premium for it, but it does have a reputation for lasting forever. It's made from Barber's trademark heavy duty wax cotton with a leather storm flap. It is actually a very simple bag with no bells or whistles. Lined with their famous tartan lining, it secures by means of traditional brass buckles and has two additional generous pockets that just fasten up with a standard press stud. All fittings appear to be trademarked brass and it has a generous and very comfortable wide webbing strap. Despite everything that I tend to stuff into it, there's still plenty of space for a small flask and some sandwiches and in my opinion it's the perfect companion for general motorcycling, whether you're commuting or just going out for day trips. Now my partner got one of these in a navy blue, I think they just do the two colours the navy blue or the olive like this one which is what actually got my attention about these bags and so I got myself one now like all barber gear they arrive sort of new and shiny they don't pre 
distress their products but they do patternize with age and the longer you have them the better the look i've been using this bag for a couple of months now and it is just starting to sort of get that worn in or lived in look about it which i love and of course the great thing about it is that as it wears in and loses its waterproofing you can just re-wax it with standard barber thorn proof wax dressing it's a stylish classic understated bag that looks good in any situation and will last you a lifetime now i will leave a link in the video description but be warned prices on these bags like a lot of barber gear is variable barber have a lot of retailers worldwide and they're all constantly running promotions and competing with each other so it does pay to do a bit of hunting for the best price and before anybody asks, this is not a paid promotion, I am not paid by Barber and I don't get any kickback from sales. I'm simply bringing this bag to your attention because it's rather useful and rather lovely. Take it or leave it. Now, one thing that has been brought up a lot in the media lately is mental health and certainly some comments that I've received over the last few weeks demonstrates to me that people are suffering. Believe me getting yourself out into the countryside away from people visiting places like st peter's and blowing the cobwebs off your bike is the perfect way to help you feel better so get yourself out there and do what you love doing what's the worst that could happen right that's it for this video i will of course be back on friday so until then stay calm carry on and above all ride safely I'll see you soon.